United States Army, tankers, who? Later, the car's owner told us, I'm a taxi driver. The car was my livelihood. In the torrid heat of an Iraqi summer, and struggling to pacify, let alone understand, a people who keep asking them for help, for some soldiers, discipline becomes a casualty. The soldiers would later claim that they had to use such force because the man, a suspected pickpocket, was resisting arrest and fighting them on the ground. The Americans release him a few minutes later to go to hospital to get treatment for the injuries he's just received. While we were filming the money exchange, a more serious situation had developed outside Assassin's Gate, the entrance to the CPA headquarters. 400,000 Iraqi soldiers had been dismissed, unpaid, as part of the coalition's purge of the old regime. And now some of them were on the streets, demanding emergency payments. But the protests became violent, rocks were thrown at an army convoy, and in response, an American soldier shot into the crowd. Two of the demonstrators, apparently unarmed, were killed. We were directed to the house of one of the men who'd been shot, Tariq al-Mushadani, a father of five. His family had just received his body in a U.S. Army body bag. For many in Iraq, and especially Allah, now sniffing the blood of his younger brother, the occupiers have little margin for error. The martyr is alive forever and his blood is always fresh. It smells good. I can't get dirty from it. To show the, uh, the world how aggressively our... As the brother's coffin was being led through the streets, the US military had already issued a press release claiming someone in the crowd had begun shooting at their soldiers, so one of them fired back. But when we found a senior army doctor who'd actually witnessed the incident, his version of events was somewhat different. My instinct at the shooting uh, was, well, I, I, I hate to say this, but I don't think it was necessary. Um, I believe someone felt threatened. Uh, you know, the American military police company that was coming by in their vehicles, someone felt a threat enough, great enough to open fire on the crowd. Yet there was no weapons to be seen within the crowd. You didn't see any? I did not see any weapons. Now granted, we're in Baghdad. There probably were weapons there. But I not, did not see any, nor was any fire that, that I heard returned back on the soldiers. Whatever the true circumstances surrounding the death of this young Iraqi, these mourners made no attempt to hide their deep hatred of the Americans. And they left with one final show of defiance. familiar sound was becoming relentless.
cards at all. But I think, Saad, my, uh, my translator, um, you were saying that before, yeah, before, before the before the coming of the uh, American troops, anyone who shoots uh, a bullet in a funeral or in a wedding uh, party, he he would be put in prison for six months. If they were caught firing like this, yeah. stop firing. Well, they'll be they'll be sent to death. This is a battle. This is not a it's a battlefield. They are showing their power. But this was a busy shopping district, and in the confusion, the soldiers opened fire on a group of onlookers. Ali has a piece of shrapnel left in his head, making it difficult for him to keep up with his studies. In the schoolyard, the fears of the children are hidden behind the defiant propaganda of the state. It is somewhat puzzling, I think, that you can have 100% certainty about the weapons of mass destruction's existence and zero certainty about where they are. Do you agree, and does it matter whether or not you we find this We might ask weapon? the Prime Minister that uh, we won't be proven wrong. This is a process that takes some time, and uh, it will ebb and flow. Is U.S. credibility on the line over uh, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means. 